Hi there, and welcome to this edition of the Manx Radio Newscast. I'm Lewis Foster. Earlier this summer, two island sixth formers went on a trip of a lifetime to attend the NASA United Space School in Houston, Texas. It was all courtesy of Mansac Group, which provides a yearly scholarship for students who win a challenging essay competition. This year's winners were Daniel Comley from Ramsey Grammar School and David Sargent from Queen Elizabeth II High School in Peel. Together, along with other students from around the world, they were tasked with planning a crewed mission to Mars. I met up with Daniel and David at DEFA headquarters in St John's to hear all about it. It was just so incredibly full on the two weeks that we had. Um, It was a lot of intense work. It was um, pushing ourselves, me and David, along with the other students from around the world that we uh, were able to work with. Um, We really tested our boundaries and we tested our ability to research and to put together arguments to present to uh, border professionals. Um, It really, like I said, it put us to to a real big test. How did you find some of those challenges every day quite intense as well? Oh, it was very intense. We were doing 10, 11 hour days most days and they completely threw us in at the deep end doing something that, although we enjoy space, was something we'd never really looked at before. And then you had your two weeks to create the mission and then after that it would be judged by a board of professionals and they were very harsh in their critique. (laughs) Um, And aside from all the work, it must have been quite enjoyable. You're speaking very highly of it now, so opening your eyes to to what it's like in this industry. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, every single um, professional in the industry that we managed to get... uh, talks from and get their point of view on the future of space travel uh they were just absolutely they were just really kind people they were passionate about their subjects um apart from that like i said the students that we worked with all of us as a group gelled pretty much instantly um i guess that was <clears throat> half brought on by the fact that we you know we've only got two weeks here we better go, get on with it like immediately um But yeah, no, um, it just kind of put into perspective that despite the fact that, you know, some of the people we're talking to have been in this industry for so long and they're so involved with it, they're just regular people who've worked hard to get to where they where they want to be. And tell us about this, uh, this mission to Mars, as it were. What what was the the prompt that you were given and and how did you uh, liaise with the other other peers there to to work together and uh, and build this thing so we were given the task of planning a theoretical concept for a trip to mars and the way they went about that is they split us up into five different teams they had the red team which was the rocket getting actually to mars the maroon team which i was on which was landing on mars the green team did the habitat for when you were there and the blue team did the rover and the equipment and then you had the yellow team which had to do all the legal and financial stuff which daniel was on but so you were split up into teams of about eight and you were given a checklist of things you had to do as like a minimum so the first thing you had to do was figure out what you needed to do and like dividing the workload and because we are obviously there with talented people that, that actually came a lot easier than you might have thought as everybody kind of was able to do most of it and had an interest in it I just wanted to touch on one of the things you asked Daniel and kind of the experiences we got there we got talks from some amazing people like Rob Kelso who's done 25 shuttle missions as head of mission control uh, Ken Cameron who's an astronaut he's been on a few shuttle missions and also some of the experiences we actually got outside of the work were quite very cool. We got to play a football match against the NASA All-Stars team. And we went to uh, NFL, not NFL, sorry, uh, MLS game and a baseball game, which was really cool, uh, along with going to the actual Johnson Space Center for a day and spending some time there. So diving into American culture a bit. Yes, absolutely. What I would say is um, I'm really thankful for the fact that um, the United Space School, the people at FISE, Um, They really put a lot of effort into not only pushing us uh, academically and giving us this very open-ended challenge where we were given a lot of independence. They also uh, put a lot of effort into making sure we experienced the culture while we were there. Like David said, we got up to so many activities. I'd find myself getting home after like maybe like nine, ten hours of working with my team and then we'd do an activity in the evening. Like David said, like we're going to watch um, a baseball MLB match uh, and then I'd get home and I'd just flop on my bed and go to sleep and just just make sure I was ready for the next day it was so intense and that football match against the uh, the all-stars who won uh, we won 8-7 I believe <laughs> I scored a goal myself still very happy about that I don't often score <laughs> cracking stuff was that the highlight might have been <laughs> what was the highlight for you 
Um, of the football match? Well, of the whole two weeks. Oh, uh, it's hard to say. Um, I would say... Honestly, the, the the friends I made, I think I'm g- they're going to stick with me for a very long time. I'm sure. I mean, David's nodding very vigorously to, to, to agree with me. Um, we're all staying in contact via social media. You know, I've got friends in Chile. I've got friends in France, uh, America. Um, you know, I met people from Bolivia, Mexico, um, Australia, New Zealand. Genuinely, people from all over the world who otherwise I'd never get the chance to talk to. And these were all people that had interest in the, in the exact same subject area that me and David were studying. So it was amazing not only to have just regular, you know, teenager to teenager conversations, but also around the subject matter we were studying. Um, it was great to talk to like-minded people of the same age. Quite character building. Yeah, definitely. And it was funny because you were staying in host family and you would have another student with you. Although there was normal teenager, teenager to stuff, the person I was with, we genuinely had some very deep conversations about space and what physics might, what science might come about. So the atmosphere definitely brought it out of you. And looking to the future, you guys are going into year 13 and looking, obviously, it's that time where you're thinking about university and you were saying astrophysics is where you want to go now. Yes, definitely. I want I want to do astrophysics and go into like the astronomy space industry uh, and wherever that kind of takes me. There's plenty of opportunities for it now as it's become an ever bigger industry. So see where it takes me. And do you economics? Yes, economics. Um, ever since I started studying at A level, um, the way in which you know it combined both of my favourite subjects at GCSE, maths and business, um, I sort of fell in love with it straight away. I've got a very a very good teacher. Um, so yeah, I really loved it, and um, I want to study it at um, uh, undergraduate level as well in the future. And as I said upstairs with the rest of the team, you know, to the guys at Mansat, um, the space school experience was one that opened my eyes to the um, massive amount of opportunities there are um, in the space industry worldwide. Um, no matter what your skill set is, there is a place for you. You know. And back here on the island, you guys were saying in the in the lead up in writing your essays and throughout this whole process, you didn't you've learned more about how much of the space industry is here on the island as well. Is that something you learn? Yeah, definitely. When I was when I first one of the questions we were asked as part of the essay competition was how can the Isle of Man contribute to space exploration? When I first looked at that question, I thought Mansat does some stuff and I didn't really know a lot else. But when I dove into it more, we have a very successful aerospace cluster which has. Uh, companies like Swagelock who regularly make parts for uh, SpaceX and that make parts for NASA so looking at things like that you realize actually how big our footprint is in the space industry and it's one of the reasons why we are recognized for things like this and if you ask people in the space industry where the Isle of Man is they can point it out better than most folk in England so and you went all the way to Houston into America to learn all about this but you guys were really much ambassadors for the Isle of Man it was said and you had culture days you made some Manx Bonnig did it take going over there to to look back and and learn a bit more about where you grew up yeah exactly um you know living on the Isle of Man and being very isolated you'd be forgiven uh, to be in the mindset of we're kind of like insignificant we're only a small island of 85 odd thousand people so uh, obviously, you, you, it's understandable to be in that mindset. However, when me and David were there, we we took real pride in presenting uh, the place we were from. Um, we did thorough research in uh, presenting our our country during the culture fair event they had there. Like you said, we made Manx dishes. We um, talked about Manx folklore, and people were genuinely interested in hearing about this stuff. And as a result, we were too about hearing about um, the cultures of the different countries that were there as well. So um, yeah, it it helped us take real pride in, in where we were from. Do you think you have a bit of a, a new appreciation, as it were? I do, yes. The Isle of Man, I didn't, like I said earlier, I didn't realize just how big our footprint was in the space industry and actually how much we contribute. So getting to look at that and then almost show it off to the other countries that even though we're small, we have quite a big impact was really nice. And writing these essays, it didn't seem like any small small feat. Um, it might put off quite a few people, but what would you say to anyone who was thinking about uh, trying to take part in this uh, in next year when it will be 25 years ago? Yes, uh, absolutely. I would say... Um, just go for it. You know, it's a massive task um, in terms of writing this essay. Um, I think I ended up doing about 2,700 words, I believe, in the essay that I wrote. And it took me a while, I will admit, it took me a while, it took me a lot of effort. <clears throat> but um, 
the research that I put into writing this essay in itself was rewarding. Um, the stuff I found out, the stuff I learned, um, and then the reward at the end was absolutely amazing. I mean, I've talked to plenty of students in the year below at my school and they asked me about this um, experience I've been on and they said, you know, how did you get in? How did you enter? I was like, yeah, you've got to write this long essay for Mansat to look at. It's a grind, but, you know, I don't let that put you off and the people I've talked to they said no that's absolutely fine you know if and I've and I've offered my own help to those people because I want to see people take these opportunities when they're presented to them how about you David uh, it's definitely worth it for any current year 12s or future 12s and the one thing I will say which is a Daniel is a prime example is you don't need to want to work in space to be on this opportunity even if you just have some interest in it it's worth doing the space industry is way more than just like space science there's there's jobs for everyone in the space industry so if you want these connections and if you want this experience it's definitely worth it for an essay i'd just love to thank uh Mansat again i'm sure david is is the same um these these people i mean it's coming up on 25 years they've been running this program now and every single year um the students come back and say yes it's changed our lives and i'm sure me and david it has changed our lives as well so the, the work they're putting in to organize this whole thing and fund it as well I'll forever be thankful for it. I'd also just like to thank Mansat. This has been a great opportunity. It's going to last a lifetime. Paul Crane, member of the Legislative Council and a, a member of the um, Education Committee, Political Committee. Jennifer Stone, I'm the Chief Technical Officer at Mansat. To hear how, uh, how glowing they are about the whole experience, you must be... Uh quite chuffed listening to that. Yeah, absolutely delighted. Um, the programme's one of the best things we do. Um, it's wonderful to be able to give Isle of Man students the opportunity and they've really excelled at space school so we are just very, very proud of them. And you were a part of this initiative back at the first person back in 2000, I believe. What was that like uh, compared to what they've been talking about? Yeah, I mean, it brings back a lot of wonderful memories for me. So it was back in 2000 that I did it. Um, so the overall premise of the program is similar and um, the access that you get to NASA facilities, astronauts, scientists um, but I think the program has just grown and grown and they've brought in as the technology has developed the program itself has developed so a um, lot of similarities but a lot of changes as well. Do you still remember it quite vividly how has it shaped um, your future if you if you look back now? Yeah, I remember extremely well. Um, it was my first time working in a sort of multicultural environment and getting that kind of access to, to world experts and, and being really sort of amazed that they were giving young students that chance to speak to these kinds of people. And really, it was very confidence building and sort of showed that this was a career that I could have and that people from the Isle of Man could have. So I mean, it opened a lot of doors for me and, and I'm thrilled to see it continuing for our, for our students. And Paul, you were giving some anecdotes as well about uh, your time over in, in America. Um, what was it like chatting to the boys and hearing about their experiences? It was amazing. You know, it, you look at um, young people growing up in the Isle of Man and, and the, some of the opportunities that come their way. And, and this is up there at the, the top of the tree, really. Here's a chance for, for young sixth formers to... Um, to head off, they were talking about people from a range of countries across the world and, and how they were working in, in uh, mixed cultural teams uh, and then staying with a, a, a local family and so on. And um, What an experience, really, when, you, when you're that age. So, uh, yeah, I'm really thankful to, to Mansat for, uh, for offering this as an opportunity and, and really grateful that our Manx students have, have uh, made the most of the opportunity and come out of it very well. And it sounds like they were quite good ambassadors for the island as well. Absolutely, yes. In terms of the, their achievements and working within groups, they identified themselves, the, the skill areas that they thought they, they hadn't seen before, their attributes and so on, things they'd learnt about themselves as well as about the programme and about other people, of course. So it, it touches an awful lot of buttons, really. And from the department's view, how important is it that companies like Mansa are able to offer these kinds of experiences? Well, these are over and above the, the normal educational offering, aren't they? So th these are exceptional things. And, and I think it, um, it really is important, um, organisations and, and companies, if they're able to do this and, and able to um, uh, help develop these, these skills. And, and clearly Mansat uh, have got some benefits from it with uh, some former students coming back to that. But um, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity and, and yeah, we, we'd be happy to work with, with any companies looking to put forward some sort of programme like this. But there are many different versions of it and, and we've had young people um, competing in, in uh, young enterprise schemes and things like that. And it, it's really good and, and they, they follow their own paths, but they, they come out with these opportunities and that's good to see. 
and as well as going all that way and learning about uh, about space in Houston, Texas, it seems they learned a lot about uh, th- their home here on the Isle of Man as well. Um, how important is that look at it, for them to be able to consider careers that they never thought possible right here on the Isle of Man? It, well, I think that's always the, the eye-opener, isn't it, that um, many young people, many people in the Isle of Man ha- have a view that they see the limitations of the Isle of Man and they don't actually see the possibilities that are there. But um, when you talk to, to young people, I, I taught on the island for 15 years and the number of people I meet now on the Isle of Man in senior roles, in chief executive roles, in, in banking, in, in all different sectors. And, and, and these are people that I remember them, them at school, but and they've made the most of opportunities. They shine in their own fields and it, it's terrific to see. The space industry on the Isle of Man, bigger than some might expect? Much bigger than some might expect and active all around the world, active on the moon, active on other planets. So, um, yeah, the Isle of Man really is a, a space centre. And next year, it's going to be the 25th year of this uh, of this initiative. What would you say to anybody who's thinking about uh, about taking part? I would say don't hesitate, go for it, do your best if you don't enter, you don't get the opportunity so I'd, I'd really encourage you if if you're eligible um, if you're in year 12 look out for it and um, it's a it's a joy to do this competition so please do your best Paul what would you say to anyone thinking about taking part yeah, oh absolutely you know if they've got any remote interest in in, in this area in, in space work and 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 that can have a, a very very wide range of approaches um, Daniel there was telling us that he's interested in finance and economics, but he's, he's seen ways in which that could be used in, in a space industry context. So if they've got an interest in that, go for it. But look out for the other opportunities that are there too. Um, we had young people in, in Turkey earlier in the year, didn't we, competing in, in the young enterprise. So the opportunities that are there, look out for those, make the most of them. And uh, uh, yes, the rewards for that, both both personally in terms of your, your own um, uh, self-esteem and, and, and your own awareness of yourself beneficial but beneficial from a career point of view um, I know I mentioned in, in the, the conversation we had upstairs that at 16 I got chosen to represent the Isle of Man at a scout jamboree in Japan you know this was 1971 I'm still talking about it you know, it's still still part of me and, and uh, yeah it was an amazing experience and um, life doesn't have enough of those really yeah Thank you for making it to the end of the Little Manx Radio newscast. You are obviously someone with exquisite taste. May I politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear on your smartphone. Thank you. Thank you.